Hey everybody, my name is TJ King and I'm the host of the Peahens Ponderings podcast. Today I'm joined by Robin, who's going to demonstrate how she wraps a cop on a supported spindle. Hello. <clears throat> so I brought a couple of different spindles. Okay, great. So I have, um, I have a Spanish pe peacock bob here, or Ronin, I still Call prefer the term Ronin. <laughs> I actually wrote it on the tag, so nice. I would know which tag went with which spindle, because I always want to remember what, what each one is and how much each one weighed. Anyway, so for the bobs and the ninjas, I wrap more like a cone. <clears throat> so with this one, I had practiced, I don't know if you can see on this camera. You know what? Let me switch to the cell cam. Oh. There we go. Nice. Is that focused? Okay, so I had done like a nicer under wrap, right? But because I wanted to make it a little more conical, I actually started to wrap over that with just this plain wrap, and I actually would go back in and fill in some of this bump. I'm trying to get it as even as trying possible. Trying to get it, yeah, absolutely. Trying to get it more even. And then once I had a nice solid parallel under layer, I would restart um, the fancier wrap. So, <clears throat> but when I'm spinning, I always do a temporary cop, and then whether I'm doing this plain wrap or a fancier wrap, I will actually butterfly it off onto my hand and then wrap. So, I am not someone who could do this simultaneous to, to spinning. Okay. If there is someone out there like that, they are impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... That one's a little harder to see because it's all, you know, one, col one color. Um, to try and do this demonstration, I have um, this Mango and Asho spindle. I hope I said their names right. Um, where For what it's worth, that's how I always pronounce it. So yeah. if you're pronouncing it wrong, I'm pronouncing it wrong too. So you're in good company. Okay. Yeah. I, I do really like their work, um, but I don't know how to say their names properly. Um, so for this spindle, I was trying to make a cup that was a little more cylindrical. So um, obviously you can see my hard edge on this side keeps um, collapsing on me, unfortunately. But um, if you go onto Instagram and you look up, we just looked up her name. N-B-N-C. N-B-M-N-C, yes. She does the most amazing cylindrical spindle wraps in the, in the middle, and I was trying to kind of emulate that. Um, and, and just out of curiosity, what inspired you to start wrapping this way? As opposed to, like, what you have here is it's perfectly fine as far as I'm concerned. Why would you wrap even fancier than that? Um, <clears throat> I, it was something I just, honestly, I saw her photos, and I think they're beautiful. Um, Carrie.cherry on in Instagram, C A R R Y dot cherry, like the fruit, um, also wraps some beautiful spindles. And out of curiosity, I just started trying to do, like, I was like, I wonder how they do that. And so I just sort of did it one day. <laughs> so, and that's the difference between, if I can just say, you and the rest of us, because we're looking at those <laughs> pictures and we're like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. I could never do that. <laughs> and you were like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. Let me figure out how to do that. Yeah, well, I, I think for some weird reason, my brain just worked that way because I was like, oh, so if I do this and then it, it happened and then everybody on the Supported Spindles Anonymous group was like, how are we you doing all that? flipped out. How are you everybody doing that? Everybody flipped like, out. Poor Robin could not make a post <laughs> without people saying, can you make a video to show us how to do that? And just lucky me, I'm the one who managed to get her trapped. <laughs> Unable, oh, I shouldn't say that, unable to leave the house until she actually does a video. <laughs> well, the, and the funny thing to, you know, for whatever reason, clearly, like, this is how my brain works. And so then I was like, I don't understand. So. Well, and that's what they say about someone who's a natural. Everybody else is gaga. And they're like, what do you mean? It's just what I do. <laughs> so we're making a video and hopefully I can. And there are some things that I'm going to do that, like, I can't really explain why 
I do them is, I know I'm slouching, this is bad, but. It, it's okay. I, I'm doing it too, but I'm like, oh, yep, yeah, right, sit up. I think it's up. also like, this couch is cozy. It's a very cozy couch. <laughs> um, so, um, to start, like I said, I always make a temporary cop. Um, here I've made them in contrasting colors so you can right. see them. Right, and I'm going to keep it on the, um, okay. the regular camera as you butterfly off so people can see what your full hand movement is, okay. just in case folks aren't familiar with um, yeah. the movements involved with the, the butterflying yeah. because you're making a figure eight around your fingers in Honestly, order to off wind off. People kept telling, like, I kept hearing people say, oh, butterfly it off, and I was like, but what does that mean? What are you even saying? It took me a while to realize they were saying butterfly like it's got two wings. I don't know what I thought they were saying, but at the time it was really confusing. So clearly I did not do my temporary cop very nicely because it's getting all messed up, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna go around my thumb, around my pinky, and I'm just gonna keep doing that. In a figure eight. In a figure eight. Um, now I took a spinning lesson once upon a time and she told me to keep my fingers spread and I do that while I'm winding the butterfly, but when I actually start winding the cop, I start using my hand and it's not pretty, so. <laughs> Let's just be prepared. I'm making it pretty now as I wind like this. It's not gonna stay that way. Not at all. Um, so we're gonna wind off the green. Um, Who did you say the fiber was from? This fiber is from the Nanette Wake Studio. She has an Instagram hmm. and an Etsy. No, actually, she has her own website. I'm sorry. She um she does fiber that she's dyed. She does yarns that she has dyed, and she makes woven like bags where she weaves the material and then she sews hmm. bags, project bags. That's cool. They're beautiful. Um, definitely something I constantly have my eye on. Someday, someday. In the meantime, I've just got, you know, 700 spindles. Um, hey, hey, <laughs> don't say anything about having 700 spindles, all right? Let's not go there. Okay, so once I have this all wound off. I'm going to switch back to cell cam. Cell cam. Yeah, we can do that. Is it um, going to be easier to show? Yeah, it could be. Okay. So um, I don't really know exactly why this particular part I do this way. But I always flip the spindle over, and I stick myself in the tummy. You know, um, as, I support as it. As you do, I support it on my tummy, and I will wind it around here, um, and then I start huh. to spiral it down. What's confusing is that this little bit is irrelevant to the process. So if you see a little green there, you know what? I'm actually going to move cell cam. Oh, okay. So I'm going to hold cell cam. Sorry for the crunchy movement of the spindle here, guys, because okay. I actually, as I'm watching it, I think it's going to be too hard to see. And of course, cell cam is now glitching. Sorry. It's not you, it's the camera. Always blame the tech. If you have tech, always, always blame, blame the, tech. the tech. There we go. Are we nice and focused here? There we go. Yeah, keep going. Okay, so I'm going to just spiral it down. And as you can see, like, this is my previous wrap, right? I try to make about an inch or around an inch in between them. I don't want, oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. I don't want too many wraps. Too many wraps, I both found, then ends up being a lot more winding. But also, and this is really funny, my vision isn't what it used to be. <laughs> I think we all are in that same boat, honestly. <laughs> so my vision is definitely not what it used to be. And when it's too many little wines, I can't see what I'm doing after a certain amount of filling it in. So <clears throat> when I come around the first time, I'm just going to start coming back down. And I don't try and make all of my crosses on oh, the really? same side. I don't even know if that's possible. Interesting, okay. Because um, I was I, figuring you had to do the crosses exactly right from the very get-go if you wanted to have them nice and perfectly lined up. I don't think any of my crosses are actually nice and perfectly lined up, though. Oh, huh, okay. 
So, so not a it, requirement if it doesn't quite happen. Because the couple no. of times I've tried to do this, I tried to get my crisscrosses to all match up, and it's just a disaster. No, I don't think that they will. So, like, they'll match up here naturally, but they're not gonna. They're they're not gonna be perfect. So, but I do the same thing. I try and keep a similar angle to what they were going, how it was going on the way up. And I try and keep about an inch in between them. And then when I get down to the bottom, I go all the way around. And then I... So one full revolution. One full revolution. Okay. And then I start wrapping. And when I wrap, I keep it on what mentally I call the outside. Like this would be the inside, right? In between the, the stitches or the singles. I keep it on the outside and I just follow that up and not follow the under wrapping part. So I just follow that up and I keep the, see, look how that's all squished because <laughs> I don't keep my hand taut. But you, you need that hand to be curled around the singles yarn as you're winding it in order to help guide it and direct it. So that makes us, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. And I should have put my phone in mute before doing this because <laughs> I just got some kind of random notification. So see, I went all the way around the top. I just do that to try and help like fill it in some. I don't want a big gap. It's totally, I'm sure you could probably do this and have a gap. I'm sure that, you know, it's just a little. But once again, when I come back down, I keep it on the outside. And I just keep doing that. And when I started doing this, and I keep it pretty taut as okay. well. Like if it were really loose, I think it would make it very hard to track. Um, and I just keep doing this until I've wrapped the entire temporary cop. So how big do you make your temporary cop before you wind off onto the butterfly skein on your hand and then wrap the pretty cop? So when we were doing... I'm sure there's a technical term for it besides just pretty cop. <laughs> um, Good cop, bad cop, pretty cop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Stupid spinning jokes. Also, the fact that I'm holding the camera is really bad because every time I laugh, it, it jiggles. <laughs> it jiggles so people are going to watch this and get so motion sick. Sorry. <sighs> um, yeah, stop making me laugh. <laughs> oh, wait, that was me making me laugh. Never mind. <laughs> so, um... I like to think I'm funny. You, you are funny. <laughs> You are funny. So what I was doing for um, the 30, 30 minutes and 30 day challenge was I would do the full 30 minutes of spinning and oh. I would just build up a temporary cop for that entire time. Okay. So I don't know if you caught the one post I made about it where I was like, I did my 30 minutes and 30, but I spent over half of it wrapping. Because I didn't do that. I would do a little bit of the temporary cop and then wind on and then spin some more. And it was a very slow process. So you do so like a big chunk of yes. spinning first and then wind the whole thing on. So the first time I think that I made an attempt at doing a pretty cop, this time I didn't go all the way around. But it's still fine. There's no gap there. Um, the first time I made an attempt at doing a sp uh, pretty cop, I think I... Um, so that's like a little irregular. So I was just sliding it with my nail to try and smooth it out because, um, sometimes it gets gaps and I've, initially I was being very, very, um, I don't know what the word I want is. I know what the word I'm going, trying to, th I was being very particular. That's the word I'm looking particular. for. I was being very particular and I was making sure that everything was touching everything, that it was so close together and that there were no gaps and that it was... Right, because then like, your underlayer would show through. Right. Because you always have some kind of basic underlayer before you start the wrap, right? I always do, yeah. Always do. Um, and then I realized... Here, I'm going to put this down for a couple seconds. Oh, no, I'm not. Nope, you're not. You're stuck. Um, I'm very stuck. That's the problem with the butterfly skein. You are stuck until it's off. Oh, my gosh. Look at that thing. But if you look at it, That's so there pretty. are lots of gaps here. There's lots of gaps here. There's gaps here. 
but it's fine. Overall, it, it doesn't looks, detract from the overall look and feel of the. And that was when I realized yeah. I needed to stop being quite so um, particular that it's okay if there's some gaps. And honestly, I found that as things take shape, it will still have, it'll have some bends and some places where it doesn't want to sit very flat. And I'm going to have those gaps even if I don't want them there. And so there were some areas where I was like, I'm going to try and get this out. I'm going to try and get this out. And no matter how much I pushed, it just went back to the shape it wanted to take. And when I stopped fighting with it, A, it took me way less time to wrap. And right, right, right. B, I realized it looks fine. Very nice. So I do try to push things into place to some degree, but not to the degree that I was. So, and it's a little easier to see what you're doing when you're using brightly colored yarn and a well-lit environment, which honestly, this isn't that great of lighting, but it's enough that you can see what's going on here. The first time I tried doing this, I was using fiber that was mostly black with flecks of oh, green. Yeah, that would be hard. And my favorite time to spin is actually sitting a, in front of the TV with the family on the couch in very low lighting so that we can see the TV, watching movies, and uh, I, I couldn't see a darn thing of what I was doing. And yeah, that was a mess. Also, I hate winding temporary cops <laughs> because I'm one of those spinners. I'm, I'm here to spin, not to wrap. But you're right, with the very careful, very precise uh, technique that you're doing, there's absolutely no way to, well, I guess if you had an extremely aggressive long draw, you might be able to draft and spin a long enough piece of singles yarn to do this kind of detail mm -hmm. but the the temporary cop really makes a lot more sense in this case yeah and like you can see this one is this is not perfect i don't know how that woman on instagram i'm assuming it's a woman that might have been a wrong assumption but how she gets the cylinder oh, so perfect can be oops i'm NNC. not in the camera oops that's me not you sorry so um, yeah i think her like, name's nancy so the end is... I hope Nancy's a girl's name, not a guy's name. I think it can be either. Really? Huh. Hmm. Hmm. But... You the, can't assume anything anymore. You really can't. Um, so the end of this isn't perfect, as you can see. And honestly, that bothers me a little, but we're going to move on. <laughs> right. Well, it looked very nice on the, um, the uh, mushroom spindle you just had up. That, that was one, a wood, Woodland Woodcraft? Yes. What's the, what's that's the maker wood, on that one? That's a Woodland Woodcraft. And that was because I just did a cone. Okay, versus a straight cylinder. Oh, I see. So this one is a cone shape. And unfortunately... And so it just narrows to a tip. So it ends yeah. up being very smooth. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. So, and unfortunately, I found that for this spindle, that wasn't the best cop shape. So then for this spindle, which is more like a Russian... Uh, I thought I would try and do more like a cylindrical right. football type shape in the middle. So this is um, kind of my, my attempt at that. And I am now committed to winding this entire temporary cup on here because it is stuck to my hand. Um, but I realized, sorry, I'm like doing too many things at once. But one of the things that that spindle actually just made me think about you was want to switch back to the other camera to make it a little easier to show the multiple um do, 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 do. like so okay. so you can hold it up would that be better or would the cell cam work better i think the cell cam might work okay better. that's fine it's okay okay so you have no idea how pleased i was with myself when I figured out how to use my cell phone as an additional camera so I could switch angles. No, that's awesome, because it actually makes it so much easier. Like, you could see the details. Um, I can even, like, manually zoom in. <laughs> Too close? Backing off. So with, the, with this cone, one of the things that I learned in this process is that each time I go up and I make a layer, a fancy wrap, I'm going to wrap the yarn around the top, right? In a cone, that means that my yarn is going to climb my spindle. Oh. And it happens much faster than I anticipated. 
and so I was going to ask with the with, with the mushroom. It seemed like you'd gotten very close to the tip. With this, and that would be why. With oh, this look one, look at that beautiful spindle there. Yeah, look and at with, that really distracting laptop in the background. Okay, moving the camera. With this spindle, which is a Spanish peacock ninja. Yay! It's my Jack Skellington. Um, I actually had to unwrap a good part of it and then rewrap because the wrap had climbed to like here and I had no place to spin. Wow. And my fan, even, even with the way that this is, my temporary cops were actually on top of. Oh, wow. My permanent cops. Well, because there was no other room because for it. Because there was no room. So I highly recommend, like, um, excuse me one second. I highly recommend starting lower on the spindle and building up layers that climb. Leave yourself gotcha. room for climbing. Because even with, with this one, I was aware of the climb. And I was like, oh, I'm going to leave room for this climb. And still... Look where it ended up. Right. This well, one I also was temporary uh, copping on top of actual cop. And you have a predefined amount of fiber you're trying to fit on each of these, right? Because you're doing like yes. a color sequence. Yes. Um, this It's a Nanette Wake Studio BFL rainbow fiber. So it's actually 12 little bunches of fiber. Each one was around an ounce. Um, some of them are, are just short of an ounce. Okay. Um, so I've been doing two bunches per spindle. So two ounces of fiber-ish on a spindle? Wow. So I think um, this one is about 1.8 ounces. I think the two bunches I used were like 0. 0.9 ounces. Yeah. So... Um, I'm impressed because normally I don't even get a full ounce of fiber onto a spindle before I'm like, okay, done, on to the next spindle. Well, I think that that's... <laughs> Speaking of having too many spindles. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever they're talking about that on the list and they're like, well, how much fiber do you try to pack on? And I'm like, I don't. I spin until the spindle starts to feel sluggish mm -hmm. and then I just move on to the next spindle. The only way I knew um, that I was getting a bit under... Uh, an ounce per spindle was because I had four ounces of fiber split across five spindles. Mm. So it was pretty much basic math. Um, and I have been trying to increase the number, but, you know, I wouldn't... Now I'm thinking maybe I'm wrong in there. And I, I measured some of them. I swear they were 0.9 ounces. Maybe I'm losing my mind. It's okay. COVID does that. <laughs> Quarantine and isolation and all that sort of stuff. We've all lost... Uh, more brain cells than we care to think about over the past <laughs> year. I mean, I can, I can remeasure some of them um, and confirm or deny that, but um, I've been doing two bunches of fiber per spindle, um, regardless of the spindle size. And one of those spindles is a bit smaller than the others, and it, it turned out to be. I, uh, this is the first time that I've experienced what you talk about, where you're talking about it going sl sluggish and getting harder. Uh, yes. And I was like, oh, 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 this is what she means. Yes. <laughs> this is what she means because it's suddenly flicking it was starting to um, almost cause the end of my thumb to be warm because I was flicking so hard. Right, the friction that's I involved. Like, and then it just doesn't seem to go as, yeah. Um, yeah. And I have, you know, my hands aren't that strong. Even though I'm using my dominant hand, I use my right hand to flick. Um, it still seems like it's just sometimes too much work. Mm. And that's the point at which I'm like, oh, yep, time for the next spindle. And I completely can understand that. Because um, I, I almost, uh, for one of those, almost thought, well, I guess I'm not going to get this whole bunch of color onto the same spindle. I might have to take this last little bit. But then I was just mulish and determined. <laughs> Pushed through. So yeah, I was like, in the end, I was like, it's not that much more. Just keep going. Um, another thing you might be able to see on this spindle here is um, I know you had asked, well, what if you don't like your wrap, right? There have been many layers where I either haven't liked my wrap or 
I um, realized I really needed to start over because I had gone t far enough up the spindle that I wanted to start. Um, I wanted to start another lower layer and work my way back up. So what I did in that case, where I wanted to start another layer and work my way back up, I did this parallel kind of neat wrap, right? Is it okay? My cell phone's almost dead because I forgot to plug it in. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, no. Remember how just a little while ago I was telling Mike how I had gone through almost every single possible technical screw up possible <laughs> in the course of these videos we were doing? Well, well we just discovered another one. Forgot, check. <laughs> forgot to plug in the cell phone. So we'll see. Um, we may have to switch back to the uh, regular That's okay. cam. So um, for, for one of the other spindles I was just showing you, when I reached a certain point and I wanted to um, go back down the spindle and start lower and work my way back up. It's just part of the how it gets conical, right? I um, wrapped a neat layer all the way to the top of that one, right? Where and the where it's just a uh, parallel lines. It's just parallel lines, R and rather than the crisscross. Exactly. And then I started my crisscross over, and then I went lower. So this one I was practicing a crisscross layer, and then I was like trying to make a surface that I could do a display on, so I did another parallel line. There's really no reason I actually stopped this crisscross layer. There was nothing wrong with it. Um, but what I would do in that case, if I had worked my way up to spindle as far as I wanted to go, and I was wanted to do a layer, a second layer where I was going to start lower, then I just would do my under layer up to like here and leave the parallel lines and then work my way back up until I get to the top again, and then do another under layer. The only reason that I'm doing these under layers, um, really, I don't know that they're necessary. It's because it makes it a surface I can better see on and better work on. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Plus, like, it allows me to, um, this is wrapped pretty tightly. So if there were areas on the other layer that maybe were bumpy or bulgy, I like suck those in. Like, so I give myself a smoother layer to work on. With this one, it's got, for some reason, it's quite bumpy right here, it dips. I would probably fill that. Okay, so oh. it's as smooth as possible before starting the crisscrosses. Yeah, and I, like I said, I, I don't know that that's, oops, sorry. I don't know that that's necessary, but that's just, how I do it. That's how I work. Well, and how you do it is what we're all envious of. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're doing this. Well, so that would be what I would do. I would work my way up to even with this, if I were going to show you guys plain wrapping, which I'm not, I would go up to here. I would work my way back down. I would wrap in here a few times over just to fill this in. And then I'd probably wrap my way back up to the top because for some reason, I wrap from the top to the bottom when I'm doing my first layer. There is no reason for it. You can do it well, either way. Just like going uh, inside versus outside the previous wrap, it would just be a matter of personal preference. I think for me, going to the outside of the wrap, it makes um, it just makes more sense to me that you're then going to be filling this area. Okay. And so just so everybody's aware, we've changed the lighting a little bit. Yes, and I've brought the cell cam in closer on a boom so that you don't have to deal with my hands jiggling. And I butterflied off to start over. Right, so we have a really nice segment here of Robin demonstrating how the wrap works. Okay, so there's a, I don't know if you guys can see, there's a little bit of where the yellow um, gradiented into green here. That part is not what I'm working with. I'm working with just the green, which I'm going to start wrapping up and I'm just going to go up at an angle and I'm going to um, space everything. My wraps, my layers of wrap, this green, this green, I'm going to try and put about an inch in between them. Once again, like I said before, uh, it makes it easier to wrap, it makes it so it goes more quickly and it is easier to see. I think um, one of the things that I did wrong with my couple of attempts 
was in fact that I just had so many layers because I probably had, I don't know, three eighths of an inch at a guess in between mine. Yeah, yours so are they were very really small. tightly packed. Yes, and that's honestly what the first one I wrapped looked like, and I was like, I can't sustain this. <laughs> it's so much wrapping. It really was. So I put a neat layer over top of it, and, and just kept going. Did a did a layer with bigger spaces, and I kept doing that until I found the amount of space in between twists that I felt most comfortable with. So about an inch. And for me, that's about an inch, yeah. But that, um, this Spanish pe peacock Jack Skellington spindle has a layer on the very bottom that that's is like, that's like exactly mine. like that. That's what my first attempt looked like. Um, so yeah, you're gonna cross it and bring it back down. I try and keep a similar angle and I try and keep that same about one inch space in between my twists. It's never perfect. Um, it just doesn't work that way. And it's a good exercise in learning to let go of perfection. Um, and that's so ironic to hear you say that because when we look at your photos, we're all like, oh my God, it's so perfect. Yeah. And you're <laughs> probably over there just laughing at us. Well, it's what's funny to me is I feel like, you know, um, the women that were, or I should say the Instagram accounts, I don't know, they're both women, um, that were inspirations to me, I, you know, I look at them and I'm like, they're perfect, you know, and to me, I don't really feel like I know what I'm doing. I'm just winging it. <laughs> and so it's really funny when people are like, can you make a video to show us what to do? I'm like, blind leading the blind people. <laughs> But, I mean, clearly on some level this makes sense to me, so I'm happy to try and show other people what I do. So from here I just, I always use the same hand that I flick the spindle with, I turn the spindle with as I wrap, and I control the fiber with the same hand I control the fiber with when I'm spinning. And it's actually funny that you mentioned that, because I do the exact same thing in terms of using the same hands, but I use the opposite hands from you. Yes. So I'm flicking with my right mm -hmm. and drafting with my left because my right hand is my dominant hand, so it's my stronger hand to flick. And my left hand is my dominant hand, so I flick right. with my left. And I do the exact same thing as you do when I'm winding. It's the right hand turning the spindle mm -hmm. and the left hand holding the fiber. And I also found I could only do it upside down even though my hands are in the exact opposite uh, orientation as how yours are, whenever I tried doing it while it was right side up, my hand uh -huh. was either between me and the spindle, so I couldn't see, okay. or the fiber was on the back side of the spindle somehow, and I just could not tell exactly where the um, singles yarn was getting laid down until I did what you suggested and flipped it over. Mm -hmm. So it's just funny that even though we use such different you know, the opposite hands for the actual spinning, we both found that having the spindle upside down while winding the cop made a bigger difference. Yes, and I thought initially that perhaps for me, the reason I flip it over is because I spin everything counterclockwise. Obviously, I spin counterclockwise, I apply clockwise. Right. But when I, my natural instinct when spinning is to flick everything, what I think some people would consider backwards. Like, I definitely, the woman that gave me the lesson was like, stop doing that. No, stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, um, and I, her concern really was that I was so into spinning counterclockwise, she was afraid I was never going to be able to ply anything. <laughs> gotcha. Because <laughs> like, it was just, yeah, I'm pretty, even when I, and when I use a wheel, it's counterclockwise. Hmm. It is a well. You w it would have to be at that point because then you would never be able to ply anything, hands or spindle spun and well, wheel spun. You would want to make sure that it was consistent just in case. Yes. Yeah. No. And so, but when I do go to ply and I do everything, oh, that got really thin. Look at that. Whoopsies. Um, when I do, when I do go to ply, it is a mental exercise to go clockwise. Clearly, that's not how my brain works. So the first time that I did this, 
I spent maybe 15 minutes of the 30 and 30 um, spinning. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to spend 15 minutes winding. <laughs> no. It took me a very long time to wind. But part of the reason it took me a very long time to wind is because I was being so particular. So everything has to lay just right. Everything has to go just here. And it really doesn't. Um, but it also, it is kind of a meditative exercise. And it does take intention. So, you know, there's a only a certain amount of, I think, sloppiness that really still works. Um, but I've gotten much faster at it as I have continued doing it. And now I can spend like 30 minutes spinning and I'll just build up that whole cop for temporary cop for 30 minutes. And then I'll spend maybe 15 to 20 minutes wrapping afterwards. I think hmm. the first few times that I did this, um, it took me 30 to 45 minutes to, to wind that the cop. That was generally the same experience I was having, where it just was the winding of the pretty cop just took forever. Mm -hmm. And I had many times where I was like, wait, why am I doing this again? <laughs> but then you see the results and you're like, wow, that's so pretty. And I think, you know, that the first, I didn't, I actually forgot the first spindle that I did this on, which was a drop spindle. It wasn't a supported spindle. And I didn't even really, it took me a, a minute to kind of recognize that um, you could do this on a supported spindle, I think. Um, drop spindling, it just, I think that's what I had seen it on more. And I mean, obviously Turks, you see all the right, beautiful, the beautiful, um, God's eye wraps that people do and I'm you know so that was obvious and then I saw somebody do it with a drop spindle and I was like oh well that's that's beautiful so I have actually I'm so kind of bummed that I ran out of the house without it but I think today we're lucky I remembered my head <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a gorgeous I believe it's a tiger maple steampunk um, Spanish peacock drop spindle the love of my life. <laughs> it kind of is. It, so it is a beautiful spindle, though. It's just, I keep it in my other stand where it's up um, in my living room, and I just look at it. And I'm like, shit, toyants. Yes. <laughs> it's so pretty. Um, it really is the most beautiful, beautiful wood and a beautiful spindle. But that is the first spindle that I ever um, attempted to wrap fancily. Um, is that even a word? It is now. Fancily? Yes. Fancily. It is, a now, it is now if it wasn't before. Fancily. <laughs> um, and that was done with a, a fiber that's not a solid color. It's a, just a random bl blue, green, and um, white. And it's, uh, there's a picture of it on the Spanish peacock flock. Um, and it's like that, I think, of all of my wraps, which is funny because it really is the first one, um, is the prettiest. I think that's one of the things that I noticed um, also with the ones that I tried. Um, you know, I mentioned the black with the little green flecks where you couldn't really see what was going on. When I switched to a fiber that had a gradient to it, mm -hmm. it was suddenly like magic. Yes. Um, because the way the colors went together it, it created a sunset effect mm -hmm. uh, on the spindle. It was almost like painting because of the way the colors work together. So I can totally see how different fibers and the color transitions between chunks of the fiber would make a big difference. And I think that that's um, really like sometimes when you see those gorgeous, gorgeous Turks, the Turk wrapping, right. I think that that lends itself to that um, beauty as well. Uh, so I, you know, part of me really was like, if I hadn't nearly wrapped myself into a blister last night or spun myself into a blister last night, um, I really also wanted to try and do more of a gradient yarn to try and use that for display. But it turns out one can only spin so much in a night. <laughs> um, so I could not spin the world and show up here. I barely showed up here as it was. 
<laughs> well, and we're glad that you did, because I think this video is going to be extremely helpful for a lot of people who've been admiring your photos and wondering how they could do similar. Um, I certainly learned a lot. Like I said, um, I definitely need to space mine out a little further going forward. And I think I need to, like you said, just kind of let go of the fact that um, the layers weren't always so perfect because I did the exact same thing you were talking about. I would use my nail, mm -hmm. my fingernail, and go back through and pack them in even tighter so you couldn't see any of the layer that was underneath it. Yes. But as you say, that's not necessarily the case. Um, going around at least one full revolution on the top and the bottom mm -hmm. is something that I had picked up on my own. Um, because it seemed like if you didn't go all the way around, it tended to um, collapse on itself. Like it would just roll off of where it was. So it was like, I'll go once around to anchor it and then go back in the other direction. Yeah. Yep. And it also like I've seen other people where they haven't gone all the way around and where it crosses, they have like a, like a valley almost. Um, like the, cause obviously the yarn is just getting wrapped from that right, point. And right. so there's a gap. And part of the reason, and this is probably not actually true to physics at all, I'm sure anybody who knows anything about fi physics out there is going to be like, no, no, Robin. <laughs> but having that gap forming on one side of my spindle seemed like it was going to potentially add to wobble because it was imbalanced. There is an area where it was going to be sticking out more, but also creating a hole. And I, there's probably zero physics behind that theory oh. whatsoever. Trust me, i <laughs> terrible <laughs> at um, physics and yet truly, truly appreciate it as a science. Um, but so that was part of the reason that I did that, both because, yes, it needs anchoring, um, but also because I was trying to keep um, kind of a a smooth edge. I mean, obviously this is not smooth, it's, but in terms of around, it being smooth going around the spindle. Sorry, that wasn't even on screen. So this is bumpy, obviously. That's not what I mean. I just mean smooth in terms of there are no gaps going around. So almost done. Sorry if this is taking a while. Um, it's quite all right because we're having a good opportunity to discuss some of the techniques and what you're doing while you're doing it. I think folks will have a better appreciation for what's involved because I wonder how many people would have liked to try it, but without really understanding every step of the way, because you're with what you've got left on your hand, you're going to fill up a lot of that green. So only a little bit of the yellow is still going to show. And that's a very good, demonstration of how this whole uh, technique works. I, I'm sure there's a technical term. Like when you're wrapping a Turk, mm -hmm. you're making a turtle. Oh, yeah. So I'm sure that there's some word for making a super fancy cop like this when you're just wrapping a regular supported or drop spindle. But I don't know what it is. Yeah, I, I don't either. I just call it fancy wrapping. With that particular little fancy. 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 I can't, I can't say it right. <laughs> I'm, I'm still sure that anybody that has that accent naturally just cringe. So I don't <laughs> think I'm saying it right either. Oh. So I'm almost actually done. So I'm not nice. going to like finish up the yellow too much or finish covering up. But you can see, um, obviously, I'm not doing a perfect cylinder. I will figure it out someday. Um, but there are some gaps here. I might push them with my nail a little bit to fill them in, but I'm not gonna go crazy. Like, I'm just gonna, I think it, even though it's not perfect, sorry, where's the camera? There's the camera. Even though it's not perfect, I think it's still okay. And then once you get this one done, we have to include a picture of what it looks like when it's done, so. You have to spend the rest of the night continuing to spin, so I get that picture. Oh, okay. <laughs> just kidding. This is gonna this is gonna take the rest of the weekend, but I can get it to you by tomorrow <laughs> night, maybe. Um, 
any final thoughts or, um, oh, it's really messy at the top. That didn't work at all. You're off the camera. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's yeah. really messy at the top. Do you think that's just because of how many layers you had under or because you tried switching to the cylindrical shape it's instead of a cone? Because I tried switching to the cylindrical shape in, from the cone and I, I have a theory about how much pressure you can put on it to maintain the, the cylinder and I think I exceeded that and squished my underlying cylinder. I wrap pretty tightly, whether no matter what shape I'm in. Um, it's, this is taught. I know there were some people that were having trouble wrapping just a cup in general. And like when I wrap, I am pulling this tight. I managed to pull this tight enough that sometimes my overtwist travels up the fiber and fixes itself. Wow. I've also managed to snap my yarn. <laughs> so um, when I say, like, when I tell somebody, like, try wrapping more tautly, I really mean to haul. <laughs> like, so anyway, and since I'm just... I'll fix that next time I go back. Um, sorry. Switch but, oh gosh, you can see that the... Oh, look at wow. that. Wow. So that's terrible. I feel um, like we're in inverted colors or something now. It kind of looks like <laughs> it. So the sun has gone down from um, when we started recording. So that's why we all look terrible now. That's Because okay. it was more important to show. Yes, this wow. wasn't going to show up, but it looks excellent in this light. We look like aliens. We do. That's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> I, um, like, I always joke that I'm, like, so white. I'm one of those dolls that if you squeeze it, you see the blood travel through its veins, that that's me in the winter. They, there used to be those dolls in the 70s. Did you not see those? Apparently not. Oh. I think I'm glad I missed well, that particular They were phase. supposed to teach children about the circulatory system, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I always joke that I'm one of those dolls, and this makes me really look like one of those dolls. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> lesson learned for next time we try to do a video, natural light, bad, always use studio lighting <laughs> that you can control. Uh, well, huh. thank you very much for yeah, coming and course. hanging out and doing the demonstration. And I'm sorry that we look like ghosts at no, this no. particular this, point I'm of the evening. I'm actually impressed right now. I actually <laughs> almost matched. Look, I'm disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, it's been a long day for all of us. Uh, thank you, everybody, for taking some time to um, watch and yes. learn from Robin as she wraps her fabulous cops. I still Hopefully think hashtag that. wrapping like Robin should be a thing. I'll, ta I'll take that. Just not wrapping Robin. <laughs> no. <laughs> tweet, tweet. I Robin, don't think Robin. that's where the internet would take that. <laughs> Probably not. Okay. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed this video, and um, we'll see you again next time. Next video, we'll figure out something else cool to do. Yeah. Have a great time, if everybody. You have any questions? Let us know. Absolutely. All right. Bye. Bye.